أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إن الذين يكتبون ما أنزلنا من البينات والهدى من بعد ما بيناه للناس في الكتاب ما بيناه للناس في الكتاب أولئك يلعنهم الله ويلعنهم اللاعنون إلا الذين تابوا وأصلحوا وبينوا فأولئك أتوب عليهم وأنا التواب الرحيم إِنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا وَمَاتُوا وَهُمْ كُفَّارٌ أُولَئِكَ عَلَيْهِمْ لَعْنَةُ اللَّهِ وَالْمَلَائِكَةِ وَالنَّاسِ أَجْمَعِينَ Indeed, those who conceal what we sent down of clear proofs and guidance after we made it clear for the people in the scripture. Those are cursed by Allah and cursed by those who curse. Except for those who repent and correct themselves and make evident what they concealed. Those, I will accept their repentance, and I am the accepting of repentance, the merciful. Indeed, those who disbelieve and die while they are disbelievers, upon them will be the curse of Allah and of the angels and the people all together. Can you repeat, can you repeat that, please? Repeat it. The definition? Yes. First one? Yes. Indeed, those who conceal what we set down of clear proofs and guidance after we made it clear for the people in the scripture, those are cursed by Allah and cursed by those who curse, except for those who repent and correct themselves and make evident what they conceal. Those, I will, accept, I will accept their repentance, and I am the accepting of repentance, the merciful. Indeed, those who disbelieve and die while they are disbelievers, upon them will be the curse of Allah and of the angels and the people altogether. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته. Yesterday we talk about the ayah which is إن الصفا والمروة من شعائر الله فمن حج البيت أو يعتمر فلا جناح عليه أن يطوف بهما ومن تطوع خيرا فإن الله شاكر عليم. I will talk about this ayah and we said it was revealed to solve a problem that occurred in Mecca before the conquest of Mecca when the believers went to perform their umrah before conquering Mecca. That door, close it and lock it, lock it on top. We said the on top, top, top. We said the eye is here to solve a problem that occurred while the believers were in Mecca performing Umrah, but they had difficulties to perform their. The sa'i between as-safa wa marwa because there were two idols that the kuffar used to touch when they go to when they begin their sa'i from marwa which is isaf and when they go to marwa which is na'ila and we said there were two people who committed adultery or zina inside the Kaaba. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like, uh, demolish them and, and change them to, to, to stones and they become idols. The Quraysh, they put them there as a lesson for the people to keep the sacred of Mecca and the Haram 
Then later on they moved them to Safa, one in Safa and the other one in Marwa. And later on they started actually uh, worshipping them by including, including the Sa'i by touching, by touching those two idols, Abisaf and Naim. And when the Muslim went, it was difficult for them to do that. So they included the whole entire Safa and Marwa as you know, it's connected to, the, to this problem, which is uh, the, the idea of uh, Isaf and, 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 and Naila. So then, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took them back to the origin. Because Isaf and Naila, they were the origin in Safa and Marwa. So the origin of Safa and Marwa talked about it. So, therefore, whatever they do, Whatever idol they put there, that should not be a reason for you to stop performing the origin of this, of this, of this symbol, which is, you know, to walk in the Safa and Marwa. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala solved that problem. So and then, they were happy, and we said, it is the legacy of, it is the legacy of Hajar, alayhi salam, and his, and her, and her son, which is Ismail. So that was it. One ayah came to solve the problem. Today, we will, inshallah, talk about this ayah, which also <laughs> still connected to the to the Yahud, the card that you have in case if you have a question. So you don't run out of you don't run out of ideas. If you have an idea, write it down. And then we can answer it or address it, inshallah, at the end, instead of like uh, losing our ideas or our questions. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in this ayah, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَكْتُمُونَ مَا أَنزَلْنَا مِنَ الْبَيِّنَاتِ وَالْهُدَى مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا بَيَّنَّاهُ لِلنَّاسِ فِي الْكِتَابِ أُولَٰئِكَ يَلْعَنُهُمُ اللَّهِ وَيَلْعَنُهُمُ اللَّعِنُونَ He said, those people, who conceal, who hides, who hides what he revealed in clear signs and proofs. So Allah is telling us that I sent down into scriptures clear proofs clear signs, clear attributes of who? Of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So the origin of concealing or hiding a correct knowledge that was given to you by a prophet, by Allah, or by somebody who took the knowledge from a prophet, who took it from Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala, is a serious crime. But the origin here is the Yahud who conceal their attributes of Muhammad Wasallam. So that is the origin. The eye is directly addressing the problem, but also setting an setting a punishment. Consequences for anyone who did similar thing. Or who will do similar thing in the future. Similar thing in their in the future. You have teeth everybody? You have teeth everybody? Yes. Um, there are tea there if you want in case. Don't look at the shirk. You don't have to look at me, okay? So, we understand the concept, right? So the concept, the origin here is to to point to the Yahud indirectly because yet we didn't have a book. Our book isn't completed, right? And no one within the people who believe in the Quran is hiding the truth that is in the Quran. Right? There was no one at that time know the Quran and hide something from the Quran in Madinah at that time. Because the Prophet was there, you cannot. The Prophet was there, you cannot. And he cannot hide the truth, the clear proofs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran. Then the ayah, from this perspective, is telling us exactly the people who are 
who are meant to be inspired is the young. And what they hide, what they conceal is their attribute of Muhammad into their scripture. Into their scripture. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Inna alladheena yaktumuna ma anzalna min al-bayyinati wal-huda. Bayyinat is clarifications, clear evidence, clear proofs of the description of the Prophet Isn't that clear proofs? Yes. Because it was mentioned to them into their into their scripture. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Wal Huda. Wal Huda. Of course, what did the Prophet والسلام, brought to us? It's Al Huda. In it's Al is Al Huda. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to the in the Quran, in our Sanata Hudan. Hudan lil nas, right? And the Quran also is Al Huda. But let us differentiate them. Al Bayyinat is the Prophet alayhi salatu salam. Right? Al Huda is the Quran. Al Huda is the Quran. Right? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Alif Tamim, Dalik al Kitabu, La Riba fi Huda. Very simple. So they know exactly that the Prophet will come and he will be given a scripture which is a Quran. So they deny both. They denied, they denied both. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, This is for the people who did this. And these are the Yahoods. These are the Yahoods. And this happened, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, after it was clarified to them in their scriptures. مِن بَعْدِ مَا بَيَّنَّاهُ لِلنَّاسِ فِي الْكِتَابِ أي كتاب؟ أي كتاب؟ التوراة لأن صفة محمد عليه الصلاة والسلام موجود يعني مفصلا في التوراة. The attribute of the Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام is detailed in the, in the Torah. But they hide it. They, they hide it. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now, He is going to set the punishment for these people because they are this. And also for anyone who will do it in the future. He will set the punishment so we will know exactly the danger of hiding the truth after knowing it. It was given was just limited to the Yahoods, then we have no problems. But then is for the Yahud already and is for anyone who will do similar thing. What is going to happen to these people? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ulaika Yalla'anumullah wa yalla'anumullah'inun. Those are the ones that Allah will curse. He did not say, Ulaika Ladina La'anumullah. So it can be limited to the past. It can be limited to the, to the past. He says, because of La'an, La'anahu Allah is Allah's person. But here he says, Ulaika al-ladheena yal'anahu Allah. Allah will curse them, and whoever do it, Allah will curse them in the future to the day of judgment. You get the point? Now, and also he said, وَيَلْعَنُهُمُ اللَّاعِنُونَ وَيَلْعَنُهُمُ اللَّاعِنُونَ And he said, what did he say in translation? وَيَلْعَنُهُمُ اللَّاعِنُونَ Did you guys hear? He said, and they will be cursed by the people who curse. No, that's not the right translation. Now, it says those are cursed by the cursed by the Curse. Yes, those who curse, that's I agree. I agree with that. But if there's a people who curse, then that's 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 not the right translation. They will be cursed by Allah and they will be cursed by anyone who curse. 
Right? If I'm the people, I'm a people. We're confident. What is Allah? Allah is curse. It's cursing. But that is just by like understanding by word. But the practical understanding of Allah is so you chase somebody away from you with anger, right? Right? Then from this we will have two kinds of attar. So we have the element of Allah, which is curse. We say it is to expel a person away from you based on anger. Right? So that, so a tarot, a tarot itself to expel somebody or to chase somebody or to kick somebody away from you is for two kinds. Tarot li ta'adib wa tarot li ta'adib To expel somebody or to kick them away, out of, uh, away from you to discipline them. This, that's the first one. The second one is to kick them away from you to, to punish them. So then Allah, for example, somebody may kick away his child from them. Are they punishing them? Are they punishing them? Do they want their child to die? Do they want their child to be destroyed? What they are doing, they are disciplining them. But if somebody see their enemy, and kick them away from them, that means that they want the enemy to, to be destroyed and die. That is the ta'zee. So, see the memory of Allah and here. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He kicked these people away out of His mercy with anger. Not to discipline them, but His anger at them. His anger at them and seriously angry at those people. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَيَدْنَعَنُهُمُ الْلَاعِنُونَ and, and anything that curse will curse these people. They will be cursed by the curses, right? Now, here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to understand that it's very dangerous to do this because we're in great trouble. Number one, the people they curse, the animal they curse, the stones, the mountains they curse, the wind will curse you, the houses, the buildings will curse you. You know why? Because you disturb their stations that you're moving around. You're either in a house, on a mountain, around the tree, close to the animal, and so on, and so on. So whenever you are close to something that is a servant of Allah, that's obeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will be cursed by this. You sleep on your bed, you have been cursed by your bed. On your tree, you have been cursed by the tree. Because of the tree does not want you who have been cursed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to accept you, accept to do what Allah wants because of they cannot disobey Allah subhanahu they obey Allah subhanahu so they will apply what Allah wants as a worship upon you, which is their course. Yeah. Where can you go? Where can this person go? So it's very serious. So it's a little particular to the people. And Allah will explain that in the next ayat. In the next in the next ayat. And when he says, one malaika, one nasa But here, the building wants to worship Allah because it's the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're in it, it has to worship Allah on you by cursing you. You write, 
your whatever, your rhyme, that rhyme is created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it will curse you. In your house, next to your tree, anything, your animal, they will curse you. They will, they will curse you. So when the Salaf, they say, I know exactly when I commit a sin. Because whenever I am close to my animal, it reacts well against me. So then brothers, this action is very, very, very critical. It's very dangerous that you are, you are being surrounded wherever you go. You are being attacked by it, by curse. Stay away from me, I don't want to see you. Stay away from me, I don't want to see you. Everything that you have is telling you. Everything that you have, then you are you're done if you don't repent. Why? It's because of you are hiding what was clarified by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala already in the scripture. And you intentionally doing it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Do you deserve what exactly is happening to you? You may have seen it, but it's a very, it's a very, very dangerous thing. Now, you are walking literally in the hellfire because everything is in your Actually, what do you May Allah protect us from that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Except those people who repent, those people who, who repent. Repentance is based upon three principles. Three principles. One is, is Allah who prescribed repentance. Right? Second, the servant will repent. Third, Allah accept his repentance. Allah will be shara al-tawbah. Wa yatubu al-abd. Wa yaqbal tawbah al-abd. Allah prescribed their repentance. Who gave us, who registered the repentance? Allah. Who repents? The sinner. Right? Who accept repentance? Allah. That's the reason why it can only be between us and Allah. It should be between only us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or in the so in the Quran if you recite, you only hear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, like it, you can only use it like this. Tab al abd. The servant has repented. Wa tab Allahu alayhi. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala repent on him, which is Allah accepting repentance. A tawbah is a rujur. Tawbah is to retreat. To uh, a rujur. To return. To, to return from your decision that you wanted to make, you return from it. You want to do something, you return from what you want to do. That's tawbah. So how it happens? Because Allah who the, the Torah, right? Number one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He told us, I granted you something that is Torah. Is there. If you do it, which means that you are doing a sin, you return from that sin. When you return from that sin, that sin had a punishment. Who would punish you is Allah. But if you return from the punishment, Allah will return from punishing you. So it's all returning. It's on Allah who will draw the punishment. You will draw from the sin. Allah will draw from the punishment. Make sense? Now, when you commit a sin, know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took the decision to, to punish you. But when you withdraw, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will withdraw the punishment. Allah will withdraw the, the punishment from, from you. In all ayat, except in one ayat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He began with Allah has given him his repentance on them for them to repent. But it's always they repented, Allah accepts their repentance. 
Paul is in the one, except in one place. Except in one place. Go remember that place. You won't remember, I know that. If anything, you remember, remember. It's true, kind of deal a little bit. And, huh? No, 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 no. Everything, repentance, so repentance. The element of repentance. Huh? Where you don't suffer? No, 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 no. It's, it's from a different thing. No, no, repentance itself. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say that in the Quran, the Surah will repent, Allah accepts repentance. That's how it's supposed to go, right? Allah deserves repentance. You repent, Allah accepts repentance. But it doesn't go, Allah repents, and you repent. Right? Except in one place in the Quran, in Surah Tawbah. In Surah Tawbah. In Surah Tawbah. Asan. In Surah Tawbah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to those people who were absent in the battle of Tabuk. The Ghazal Tabuk. What did he say? I'll give you the hint now. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَعَلَى الثَّلَاثَةِ الَّذِينَ خُلِّفُوا حَتَّى إِذَا ضَاقَتْ عَلَيْهِمُ الْأَرْضُ بِمَا رَحُبَتْ وَضَاقَتْ عَلَيْهِمْ وَضَاقَتْ عَلَيْهِمْ أَنفُسُهُمْ ثُمَّ تَابَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ لِيَتُوبُوا Can one fill the hole? ثُمَّ تَابُوا فَتَابَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ لكن في هذه الآية وحدها قال الله سبحانه وتعالى ثم تاب الله عليهم قدم توبة على توبتهم ليتوبوا. So he said in this ayah the three people who who were absent for one for no excuse from joining the believers in the battle of Tabuk. Allah سبحانه وتعالى said حتى إذا ضاقت عليهم الأرض بما رحبت. They were. Let me tell you something. Why, you know, we have prisons? Why we have prisons? Why do we have prisons? Do you know why? Huh? Isolate. Yeah. Punish. To punish. Whatever it is. But, it's, it shows our weakness. People who initiated prisons, that shows their weakness of not having control of the society. They have no control of the society. If they have control of the society, they will let the society be a prison for that person, not the bars, not the walls. And that's the reason why the Prophet didn't have a prison. When you do wrong, he will lock the society from you. Because he has the ability to control his own society. Huh? Yes, but we cannot do that. We cannot do that. There's no effect for it. Actually, you're telling the person who will do that. Because people will talk to him. People will deal with him, people will do, right? But the Prophet didn't need that. It shows the power that this leader had, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's what he did with these people. You commit a great crime, he won't do anything to you. He will just say, no one talks to him. No one eats with him. No one associates with him. No one sits with him. That is exactly what is going to be practiced. Even your wife won't talk to you. That is the prison. You will do it again. If we do that, can, can we do it today? No. That's why he didn't have a, he didn't have a prison. <clears throat> like, who can, who can, what, what leader can do this? They don't know the prophet's line or something. He was obeyed in his society. He was respected in his society. He was loved in his society. He will walk day and night in his society. If he says something, that's exactly what the society loved to do. And they will do it. When these people happened, he locked down the society from these people. He didn't lock these people inside the prison. But he told the society, do not have anything to do with these people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the prison, you're good to go. You do whatever you want. 
That's why you go there, you come back, you come back into your crime again. Allah subhanahu wa described these, the, 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 the effects of the prison of the Prophet He said, Hatta da'ata alayhim al-qal. Till they think that they are being squeezed by the earth. Like they have no way to go. They rather be in the prison and talk to the people. They rather in the, they rather be in the maximum security and they still talk to people. But here they are free. They are free. But subhanAllah, they feel like they are in extreme maximum security. So reason why he left them. He told the society, I want you to be his prison. Let life move on. We don't want to waste any time with this guy. We don't want to waste resources with this guy. If you're with me, if you're the soldiers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, your eyes are prison. Your sitting is a prison. Your walking is prison, your talking is prison. I want you to prison this person, to lock him up. And they were locked up. And they were walking. They said that was the worst days in our lives. That's why if you have the chance to come back, you will go back. If you have the chance to come back, you will go back. That's the reason Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Thumma tab Allahu alayhi. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala legislated a tawbah for them. Because there was no tawbah for these people. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shara'a lahum tawbah. Allah legislated a tawbah for them. Thumma tab, it is only time you listen to the Quran. Thumma tab Allahu alayhi. Liyatubu so they can repent. And if they repent, he doesn't need to mention the third part, which is he'll accept their repentance. You get it? Who, like, if I do something that, if I, like, no, no one can, no one can legislate, uh, how to call it, turbo for me. Right? Except the one that we already know. But those people, what they did, they were in prison. Till Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed an ayah to give them the chance to make tawbah and that was a chance for everyone who does such a thing and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said so they can repent and if they can also accept there with their repentance right so then tawbah is based on three elements Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describe it and the servants whenever they do something and this was a return Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prescribed that something. And the servant is doing something that is wrong. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a decision that if you do it, I will punish you. So when they withdraw from that sin, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is there, he will withdraw from the punishment. So this is the idea of a tawbah. So the next day, I ask you, what are the principles? Not the principles. The other principles of you guys are talking about acceptance, like the the, the tawbah, the nasuah, the sincere repentance, is to regret and determine, and you know, to promise that you will go back. Those are the principles of tawbah and nasuah. But this is rather the basis of of a tawbah. So then, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said, "Illa ladina tawbah." So then. Even if a person did, there's a huge crime which is hiding or concealing the truth. Even if they do it before they die, they repent. What was the punishment that they had before? What what is the punishment Allah Subhanahu wa Taala decided to punish them? Is Allah will curse them? We know the curse, right? And curses will curse them, right? And we know what curse means, right? It's not to discipline them, but to punish them, right? Even though it was so big, Allah took that decision to make them, and then suddenly before they die, they will draw from that. Allah SWT will draw the punishment from them. So He said, إِلَّا الَّذِينَ تَعْبُوا 
wa aslahu wa bayyanu they repent they fix what they have the damage that they made then they clarify what they have hide illa alladhina sa wa aslahu wa bayyanu that's why if you go to school if you go to the munafiqin Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said inna munafiqina fi darki aswad min an Oh, I can't go. I can't go more than that. I'm out of time. Illa ladina tabu wa aslahu wa bayyan. Allah subhanahu wa taala said, "Faulaik atu wa alayhim wa an tawabu rahim." Those are the one that I will accept their repentance. I will withdraw the punishment from them. That's the practical meaning of repentance. I will withdraw the punishment on these people because an tawabu rahim. I am. Um, the one that tawab uh, the most 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 what did he say brother tawab he has it why why going shahar i want to i want to have you i understand what the translation what tawab yeah it's a translation the end of the whole line No, no, it's a tawab. One at tawab or rahim. I am accepting of repentance. I am. And I am accepting of the repentance and the mercy. Yeah. I am the accepter. I am the accepting. Yeah. It says. Uh, and I am the accepting. I am the accepting. Of repentance and, and most merciful. And then they just say the merciful. That's it. Yeah. Sometimes more accepting repentance and most merciful. I will say that because tawab or rahim is the same thing, right? Abandon me, like more like now the companion, right? Accept the repentance. So, but we have all I want, you know, the translation. You cannot get the benefit of translation with the Quran by the translation. You have to understand what it says. You don't need the exact meaning. What it, what the exact? You know, you, you don't know the exact wording of the translation. All you need is the meaning of the word. That's what you need to benefit from that. To benefit from it, insha Allah. ولا التواب الرحيم تك ذا تك ذا تك ذا مايكروفون اي دونت تو بيس كنت ذكر العربي نعم ا برادر هاف تو فينيش هاف تو فينيش اور اي ام ان اي هاف بس ذا كونكت الله سبحانه وتعالى سبحانه وتعالى ذا سبحانه وتعالى رايت ذا ثيرد اي از ان الذين كفروا وماتوا وهم كفار أولئك عليهم لعنة الله والملائكة والناس أجمعين خالدين فيها لا يخفف عنهم العذاب ولا هم ينظرون. He said those people who disbelieve, they die upon disbelief. If they don't die, what happens? They withdraw. Allah will draw the punishment. The person who keep my life, if they withdraw, Allah will draw the punishment. The munafiqin, if they die, Allah will draw the punishment. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, the hypocrites are the munafiqin, they are punished with the worst in the hellfire. He said, the hypocrites, what if they die without withdrawing? Allah said, إِلَّا الَّذِينَ For the munafiqin, it's to the nisa, that I had to bring, put it into, I don't know. إِلَّا الَّذِينَ تَابُوا وَأَصْلَحُوا وَعَتَصَمُوا بِاللَّهُ وَأَخْلَصُوا دِينَهُمْ لِلَّهِ فَأُولَائِكَ مَعَلْهُمْ مِنِينَ وَسَوْفَ يُتِ اللَّهُ مُؤْمِنِينَ أَجْرًا عَظِيمًا. The Munafiq he said, except those who repent, come back, fix their problems, sincere, those are with the believers. They were physically with the believers, but to Allah they were not because they were hypocrites. But now they are in the group of the believers, and Allah will great will give give them great reward. Here also the same thing. The people who disbelieve, they die upon it. Because they die upon it, Allah will change His mind. Allah will withdraw them, withdraw the punishment. He will punish them. What is the punishment? Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said, "Those are the one that ulaika alayhim." It's already fall on them because they die upon kufr. The first He said, "Yalaalum." He will punish. He will curse them, right? But He said, "These are the one that Allah curse, which is Allah's curse fall upon them." And the angels curses people when nas ajmain and everybody curses them. How many kafir will curse them? Makes sense. Like everybody will curse these people. Where? Like a 
Of course, a Muslim will curse the, the bad person, right? But the bad and the bad, there's no need for them to curse each other, right? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said here, everybody will curse those people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, like for example, you know, I, it's very wrong, I don't know if I go there, but I'm just going to ask. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Araf, حَتَّى إِذَا دَخَلَتْ أُمَّةٌ دَعَنِ الْأُخْتَى Even in Jahannam, the evil, of course all the people will curse the bad people, right? But here, the bad people also will curse one another. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, whenever a group come, meet the one that was there first, the one that was there will curse them. And they will be cursing one another. In the hellfire, all of them in the hellfire. So that means one nasi ajma'in. Like the Muslims will curse them and they themselves will curse each other. So that's the meaning of one nasi ajma'in. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, He said, one nasi ajma'in. And every people, people as a whole will curse, will curse those people who died upon, upon the kufr. It's very, it's very scary. It's very, very scary. So the angels, the angels will curse them, and the people will curse them. Of course, the angels and the believers they are on one side, right? But how about the other, the other side, who are the non-believers, the evil people like them? Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said in the Hurfaya in Surah Araf, "Hatta ida dakhal ummatun laan ukhta, hatta ida darku fiha jamian." You know, "Qad ukhram ulam rabbana ulai Surah Araf." Right? So that is the meaning of this ayat. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said. خالدين فيها لا يخفف عنهم العذاب ولا هم ينظرون. They will be in the hellfire forever. لا يخفف عنهم العذاب. There is no day that will come if they will have ease in the punishment in the hellfire. ولا هم ينظرون. That sip. There is no ease ease for these people. They will be forgiven. That sip. They will be forever into their into their punishment. ولا يعذب الله. Any questions? Okay. Let me go to the questions. Uh, now, they said, "Kitman al-Arabi al-Sharri faqat am al-Dunyawi aydan." You know, Kitman al-Ilm al-Sharri, Kitman al-Ilm al-Sharri, because al-Ilm al-Sharri is the maqsud in this ayah. He said, "Consider the knowledge." Is it limited to their knowledge of the deen or is the whole entire knowledge of dunya? No, we're talking about the knowledge of the deen. We're talking about the knowledge of the deen. But of course, if you can benefit somebody from the knowledge of the dunya, I think it's very lawful to, to benefit them, to benefit them. But here is limited to their uh, to, to the knowledge of their of the deen because Somebody may use it against you. Somebody come and ask you a question, and they're in exams, and they will tell you, Oh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, uh, if you don't give it to me, you have, you are concealing it from me. Right? So, to be, to be, to be, to be very, you know, clear that this is the knowledge of their, knowledge of the deen. كَيْفَ تَقُولُ أَنَّا امتحان فقط هذا هو السؤال امتحان فقط is it before uh, Allah we, that's why we say in the beginning, this is exactly 